if everything goes well, you see my presentation now. So as I told you, um, we are going to talk about uh, projects to turn old clothes into new textile products, um, specifically based on uh, mechanical recycling. So I'm very happy uh, to introduce you uh, as well to uh, Mr. Gerwin uh, Homuel from uh, Altex Textile uh, Recycling uh, in uh, in Germany, who will uh, bring more details about uh, this uh, this technology and production uh, later on. Uh, maybe just uh, to start off with um, a small uh, introduction about um, Ariane Innovation. Uh, we are a startup uh, that launched um, after summer holidays last year, and uh, we have launched uh, the digital platform Ellie Connect, where we really aim to inspire by means of, of these talks as well, inform and connect uh, the textile and fashion industry towards more sustainable so we really believe in uh, in working together to drive this change in this industry uh, where a lot of challenges uh, are lying ahead. So we're talking here as uh, as Ellie, which is actually our uh, companion in this uh, sustainable routes. Just to give you a brief introduction, why textile recycling? I think most of you know uh, the impact of our um, textile industry. You have uh, these uh, the CO2 emissions uh, that are uh, there um, in the whole uh, value chain coming from fiber production production uh, in, uh, in the production of clothing, the use of, of textile material of clothing, washing and then after use um, after uh, the end of life uh, of the product. So you have a, a very large impact um, in all those um, in all those uh, applications. And what we look for when we talk about recycling is how can we um, decrease uh, the impact CO2 wise, but as well uh, water impact, um, as well as land uh, uh, impact of uh, those uh, those new materials. Because on the long term, I think there will be a lot of scarcity in uh, in raw materials as well and water use. Uh, so it's it's very important to think about uh, these topics um, based on mechanical recycling. Now. What is recycling? Uh, just to start with a small example, we talk about pre-consumer recycling and post-consumer recycling. Pre-consumer means um, waste that is coming from uh, production entities or that has not yet been sold to a consumer. When we talk about post-consumer recycling, we talk about, uh, for instance, clothes or other uh, materials that were uh, collected after uh, use from uh, uh, from uh, the, the consumer. So you have different uh, waste streams as well. And what can you do with that? Well, of course, you have different options, all resulting in a different sustainable uh, impact. First of all, um, and uh, this is preferably the best option, is just avoid uh, waste uh, generation by reducing the use or re reusing without uh, recycling the material um, already. Uh, the second way uh, waste can be uh, can be managed and which is actually the the last alternative but still today is happening uh, quite often is really uh, using it as as landfill just deposing uh, the materials um, I think uh, for instance in, in Africa or Asian countries without really recycling of course in Europe um, the norms are already a little bit more strict but still it is uh, it is happening today uh, third option um, which is uh, already happening a lot still happening a lot uh, is the easy solution of incineration the benefit there um, you know compared to the landfill option is that you still generate some kind of heat energy uh, so you can compensate um, new uh, energy production as well but uh, the solution we will be talking about today is really the recycling is using uh, waste materials into new reusable products and in our case upcycling it towards uh, new uh, textile uh, new textile products uh, so um, what is recycling? Um, you, you know, the process of um, collecting the waste uh, can be done in different ways um, in the textile containers, for instance, in, in Belgium, but also uh, private uh, entities that are collecting. Then uh, the textile materials get uh, segregated, get sorted, uh, are processed. 
uh, recycled, remanufactured, uh, and then uh, put on the market uh, again for uh, for a second hand uh, use. Uh, you have different recycling techniques. Uh, today we will be focusing on mechanical recycling uh, only, um, just to give it a focus. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, different options uh, which are already on the market or still in um, you know in in lab scale. Uh, the first one, the most easiest option in recycling, is, is really fabric recycling. That is using uh, the cutting waste just to make new products again without having to transfer them uh, in a in a production chain. The second one uh, is yarn recycling. Uh, it means just unraveling yarns uh, from sweaters again, for instance, for new knitted uh, knitted garments. Um, the third one, which will be the focus today, is uh, is the mechanical recycling, where fabrics are shredded uh, into a new fiber for different uh, applications. Then you have the more complex technologies. You have polymer recycling, which really means destroying uh, the, the the fibers uh, in, a, in, a, in a chemical ma matter, but still keeping the base chemical structure uh, intact. Uh, it can be mechanical or uh, chemical uh, dissolving. Um, and then you have uh, really the, 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 the last process. The most complex one is really where you recycle uh, textile material up until definitely when, when you talk about synthetics um, you you go uh, back to the to the monomer so you 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 break down uh, the chemical structure of uh, your synthetic fabric uh, to recycle it again uh, it's a very complex process um, but the quality of course um, might be better than than just you know uh, decomposing something uh, in uh, in in the current uh, current means but um, Today we're going to focus on uh, on mechanical recycling, uh, which is um, today the most often used uh, for various applications. And for that, um, I think there's no better means uh, to give you some insights and introduction than to talk to the expert who is on the production floor itself. So uh, I'm very happy uh, to give the world the word now to uh, Mr. Gerwin Humuel of Altex uh, Recycling uh, in Germany, who will give you some more detailed insights about uh, this technology, the opportunities and the challenges for uh, the textile and, uh, and the fashion industry. So, uh, Gerwin, I uh, give you the floor. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Julie. Um, first of all, thank you for the invitation that uh, we are yeah, invited to present us and present our 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 uh, process to to give you a deeper you all the deeper look into the textile recycling, the mechanical textile recycling. Um, so I will now share my let me have a look here. You should now see my screen with the presentation, I guess. Do you see our, our logo? Yes, great. OK, so first of all, um, we are. Well, let me have a look here. Ah, no, OK. So I will start now. Uh, who's Altex? I will just give you a small invitation about Altex itself because um, the main interesting thing for you will be the, the mechanical recycling. We are family owned with tradition. The first activities from um, the family Stiedemann, who are both still the owner, um, is uh, in 1936. And uh, yeah, they have uh, this time founded a small company and they were just trading some metal and clothes and so on. I mean, 1936, you know, there was uh, uh, the war later and so on. So there were many, many, many yeah, waste on the streets and so on. And so they, they, they have collected it and tried to trade it a little bit. And in uh, 1975, uh, Günther Stienmann has uh, founded the company with his son, Bernhard Stienmann, the oldest son. Um, and uh, now the daughter of Bernhard Stienmann. So the third generation is now the owner of uh, this company. They are producer of non uh, of non-wovens. Later, I will give you, a, yeah, a little a little more deeper um, information. And um, where I'm from is Altex Taxi Recycling. We were founded in 1989, and um, it is it was founded also by Günther Stienemann. So the father 
with the second son, Carsten Stienemann, who is still the owner of the company. So we are still in the in the second generation, but the gen, um, the first and the second generation founded it uh, directly together. So, yeah. Um, about our locations, Altex Gronorfils is a producer of non-woven. They have five state-of-the-art production lines. Uh, they can produce non-wovens from 40 to 4,000 uh, 4, gram per square meter um, for different applications, geotextiles, automotive, for all kind of yeah, non-woven application. Uh, for out of 100% recycled, of course, from mainly from us, of course, and uh, but also from from virgin. So also technical non-wovens for filtration and something else where mechanical recycled fibers are not so not so good in use for. Um, they have an annual capacity from 10 to 5,000 tons. Yeah, but uh, the more interesting part uh, is Altex takes recycling now. Uh, we have five state-of-the-art uh, pulling lines. Uh, which are all different, um, where we can use different kind of products. Um, so, um, yeah, we have one specific line who is uh, equipped for, for old clothes, which I will explain later a little more, uh, because this is now the most interesting uh, part in this case. Um, and others which have, uh, yeah, are more equipped for easily pull, uh, uh, for, for material which is easily be pulled, let me say and or others where are uh, yeah, more more strong materials and so on, so that we have five different uh, pulling lines for, for each, each application. Um, yeah, there we do the recycling and blending of textile production waste and raw materials, the pre-consumer waste and the post-consumer waste, as Julie has explained already, but later I will also talk a uh, about it a little more deeper. And we have also two big blending lines where we can do big blendings from, um, yeah, out of as many components as you want, uh, we can we can blend uh, our recycled fibers also with uh, virgin fibers together, or just yeah blend of course on, only uh, recycled fibers or also only virgin fibers. This is uh, possible, and we have an annual capacity from 3,000 tons, uh, monthly capacity from 3,000 tons. Um, in the moment, it's a little lower, of course. Um, because of lack of raw material, because in the moment um, we see that there are um, not so many raw materials on the market. The people, um, when we have the old clothes, uh, the people don't go shopping so much or as much as as uh, as a normal days, I would say. The online shops can, can't fill the gap and so the people don't go outside so many and so there are not so, yeah, the people don't buy so many new clothes and so they don't sort out their old clothes. Um, and the sorting companies get two less of the com uh, of this material that they, that it makes sense for them to sort. So we are in the then we are in the heat recycling. What uh, Julie explained that more of the old clothes in the moment got yeah burned because um, for them it don't make any sense to to sell it only in the industry because uh, this is just a small part for them. The main the main uh, income they have is from the from the uh, Secondhand clothing and so on. Okay. Um, yeah. Why Altex? We are a family tradition with future, more than 80 years experience. What I've told you before. Uh, we are still uh, owner managed, so we have no big deciding ways or deciding workflows. I mean, uh, when we have any big decision to ha uh, to make, we can ask our our CEO. He can decide about uh, over his own money. I would say there's no big premiums we have to to run through. So um, for this, we have short communication and decision workflow in this case. Yeah, constant uh, know-how transfer in the group. So our benefit as a fiber producer is that we have, on the other hand, a non-woven producer um, who can give us their know-how, so that we can help our customers a little more because what Altex Corona Fills does is what mainly the main part of our customers do. Um, so we can help them a little bit and also uh, develop together products and uh, make trials at Altex Corona Fills to see if it works as as we think and uh, such things what we are, yeah, where we have our benefit. Yeah, our state of the art machinery, of course. And uh, yeah, what we need is a big warehouse. Uh, we have a big warehouse, but uh, this is what we need. Uh, later, I will uh, come to the challenges we have in the purchasing that we um, can't plan our purchase as, for example, 
a non-woven producer who needs a specific polyester fiber in this amount per month, he he, he calls, let me say, Merkische Faser, Green Fiber or whoever, uh, ask for the fiber, ask for the uh, confirm, uh, confirmation and gets the fiber as he needs. And uh, we need to see, okay, what can we get in the moment and what will we need in the future? And some, some of them we have to store uh, to don't get in trouble that we don't get the material anymore. So. Yeah, these are the challenges, but later I will explain it in, an, in another file. We have a large product portfolio. This is what I will explain. And uh, of course, we are so an important and reliable partner for your green footstep. So this is what what we uh, what we see in the last two, three years that more and more companies are thinking about their recycling possibilities um, so that we get more calls like um, let me say yeah we have this waste in our uh, in our production and we are thinking about using it for our own production again can you help us such such uh, things because uh, many companies are still also uh, burning or um, polyester materials which are good raw materials but uh, but they didn't think about it before and now we, we are getting we see that it's getting more and more serious by now portfolio what we do is recycled and prepared fibers um, polyester pp pa bico viscose all kind of fibers i mean i will don't go too deep now um, but um, if you need if anybody needs any 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 list or whatever i can i can share it later it's no problem but uh, yeah all kind of textiles let me say uh, we do fiber blends as I, as I said before we have two blending lines one is for the functional blending like uh, Recycle cotton with bico together, for example, for the for the chemical characteristics. Um, there we can uh, in this blending line we have eight to ten tons capacity per uh, in, in the box per per blend, so we can run very very big blends per batch. Um, and we have uh, another smaller blending uh, blending line which is more for uh, optical blendings. Like uh, we have a partner, a carpet producer. Um, where the color is very important. And so, um, yeah, we do the blending for them uh, because not many companies have the possibility at, at their house um, to have uh, to get it very, very homogeneous. And we say that our blends are up to 99 or more homogeneous. Yeah, we do also the technical fibers like aromid fibers, non-wovens and yarns. Um, yarns with, with partners, of course, because uh, we don't do the yarn by ourselves. Um, glass fibers, Carbon fibers is also new. What we do is uh, because um, there's so many tons of thousand or million tons of carbon on the on the market, because nobody, yeah, uh, likes to use it because uh, the the electricity characteristics. Um, so it's very lightning, and uh, you have to 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 yeah secure all your machinery that that no of the fibers get in the in the in the electric because then you can you, you can have a a big big crash in the line and uh, so so there's so much of the material on on the market this is why we said okay um you can't burn it that's another thing so this is why it's stored it, it is stored in so so big amounts and so we we try to find solutions to recycle it and uh, by now we have a solution to to do it for the compounding that we produce short fibers out of it um, we get big fab uh, fabrics and cut it, and uh, then it will be uh, blended at our customers with uh, PP, and uh, they make a compound out of it, for example. Or we are also um, developing an, uh, a non woven in the moment, but uh, yeah, these are the things we are doing in this in this area. Natural fibers, of course, like cotton, jute, hemp, sisal. Yeah, we have a very, very big portfolio. We do contract work, what means that we get material from our customers, pre, uh, process it for our customers again, that they get it back. Um, this is what we do as well, or contract work as uh, blendings. We get uh, different fibers, which we blend together for the customer. Um, yeah, if you need any partner in looking for a solution of your material, this is what, what we do. Filling fibers and flakes for home textiles, of course, yeah. Uh, what is also a big part is uh, textile cutting for horse riding grounds. Um, of course, in the last years, due to microplastic uh, conversations, uh, which are in the politics very, very high, um, it gets lower and lower, but uh, we get polyester non-woven, what we cut uh, to, to small pieces, and the pieces will be blended with sand at the customer directly at the horse riding ground. And they, yeah, 
implemented in the in the grounds and then um, the, the ground is softer the water runs down faster um, when it's freezing by night the, the ground won't be too hard and so on so some and the and the, the rider uh, or, or the, yeah the rider are very happy with that I mean seem to be good for the for the horses so yeah, trading of textile waste is what we do as well. Uh, sometimes we have textile waste what we can't use, um, like in, in the PP, that we can't open it um, um, for to a fiber. These are things we sell to PP extrusion, extrusion companies, for example. Yeah, trading of textile machineries. Uh, so if you're looking for any machinery, we have it in our website. We have a used machine list where we sell our lines, um, some of our old lines, or some, it's, it's a hobby from our managing director, uh, so that he buys some machinery and says, okay, possibly he's looking for, for something like this or another one, and then we prepare the line and sell it or something like this. So if you're looking for a line, you can have a look at our website. Yeah, and many more. We are always open for, for, new, for new things. Yeah, now to the pulling process. Um, Julie has explained the raw material sources. I mean, this is very similar, so I can run through a little bit faster here. Um, we we have the pre-consumer waste. As Julie said, it is before the produce, uh, the consumer has the material. Uh, so it's production waste in a way. So there are many different kinds, like from the knitting production, from spinning, from yarn production, from spinners, non-woven production, clothing production. We get our raw material from all over the world. We get it directly from the clothing production, like jeans production from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, for example, or possibly also from, from here local, of course, all, all kind of everything you can pull to a fiber is, is what we what we buy. And sometimes also others, uh, what we can process in on, on other, uh, other, other ways. Um, and the post-consumer, like uh, old clothes and so on, everything what comes from the, from, from the consumer. Um, and these and, and, and the sources there are sorting companies, traders or dis disposers. Um, yeah, sorting and trader is clear, I think, because sorting is uh, when you have the jeans, we get it from um, it, we get it from the sorting company um, and not from the Red Cross directly, for example, when the Red Cross, as Julie explained, uh, gets the, the container, they sell it what, what they don't need. They sell it to the to the sorting companies. The sorting company looks what you can use for second hand. And what he can't use for the second hand, he sells to, to companies like us. Traders is similar. Um, I mean, the traders could be on both sides because uh, there are traders which are trading just textile waste from pre-consumer. There are traders which are also trading with old clothes uh, for industry as well. And disposers, disposers, for example, we get um, jute coffee bags from, from disposers because uh, when Jakobs Krönung for example, or Milita coffee and so on, when they get the, the coffee bags, um, they mostly get the, the coffee beans and they get them mo mostly in, in jute bags or sisal and uh, they just cut them off. Um, they just cut them, open them and then, yeah, they're, they're, the beans fell out and then they, they dispose them and the disposer trade is, is in this time, then they're a trader and informs us here, we have a new, new truck again and uh, we get the material. So uh, it's a pity the, the the lifetime of such a of such a yeah I think um, good material like uh, the, a jute bag is is, is very short uh, just one time um, the jute will be uh, knitted then they send it to the to the to the uh, to Bangladesh or wherever or, or they will be knitted there and then fill it with beans and then they will be disposed when they are not used anymore so and and we pull it to fiber and then it goes into the automotive industry for example. Challenges in purchasing are quantity not always controllable this is what I said um, the thing is that our um, main of the companies of course try to improve their production so they say uh, they have in the moment 20 percent of uh, of waste for example, and they try to get this num amount lower and lower, what means for us less and less raw material, of course. The other thing is that um, it is a very harsh market because um, it is like, um, yeah, when you say uh, we pay for one raw material 15 euro cent per kilo, for example, uh, and, they're, and, 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 and they see there's another one who can pay 18 euro cent, then they sell it to, to them when we don't have a good relationship to them, a long relationship. There are man, many of them where we have a good relationship, but sometimes it goes to the to the 
to to the person who who pays the most. And um, because for for our suppliers, it is not a product; it is it is a waste. They they are happy to to sell it to sell it <laughs> anyway, to not dispose it. And um, and so for us, it's always a little difficult. We have always the the worst side in the in the in the in the purchase. We say. Uh, we have customers on both sides. This is what we have. Um, I mean, we in, in sales, we need to take care for our customers, the customer service, <laughs> I would say. But on the on the on the purchasing side, it is near almost the, uh, the same because when um, we have to also we have a supplier service in the end because we need to take care for our supplier that he is still willing delivering delivering to us because he can say from for today to tomorrow, no, I don't want to deliver to you anymore because there I get. Five, five euro cent per kilo more, and this is our our big big problem. And also, I mean, when our customers would like to know the quantity we can have per month, um, it's always difficult to get this info from our from our suppliers because uh, he says, I mean, it's waste. We hope that we don't have waste in the future, but uh, so it's always a little a little difficult to to explain it to them. Yeah, um, purchase and packages what means that and this is why we need to have a big warehouse as well, because um, sometimes we have to buy materials what we don't need to get the material we need. So, for example, when we say we need all jeans from anybody and he and he has a big amount of pullovers, for example, what we don't need in this moment, uh, he says, OK, you can get the truck jeans when you buy two trucks of the pullovers, for example. This is um, simply um example what how how it could how it could uh, run in this in this business imparting of quality requirements is also very difficult because um for them it's waste and uh, to give any quality requirements to them is of course difficult when we say we get white material white polyester uh, non-woven and we say that it's not allowed that there's any black inside he says okay i will try but uh, it is waste for for them so this is always difficult and also when we have the supplier or our contact person on our side the person who sells us the material it's also difficult for him to get his um, employees or his colleagues on his side so for example when the the the, the production is running and uh, waste is causing there uh, and they put the waste in the, the the production waste in the box then the employees often think oh, okay there's waste so i could put in my cigarette packages might have been what whatever uh, we find so many different things in our in our in our products sometimes in our raw materials. So this is also very challenging. Yeah, this is the main thing. Our raw material is waste for our suppliers. The the main thing what makes this uh, the purchase of this material very difficult. And we have the delayed price trend um, because. Um, we get off in the inquiry, for example, prices of polyester are falling, that our customers contact us and say, hey, polyester is going down, so we, we would like to have a price decrease as well. Um, but um, it is it is a different, um, we can, you can't say that when uh, polyester fiber goes down 10%, that also the, the, the raw material of the waste goes down 10%, because we are already very low. And uh, sometimes it goes down two cent, two two euro cent or something like this. Then, but uh, it is a total different price trend. Uh, I mean, um, we see now that the prices are going higher and higher on the on the market. Uh, what means okay? Then the prices, of course, and the raw material goes also higher because our supply says okay, and now I can get more. But you don't have to think that um, when polyester is going down uh, again, that they directly say okay, now we can decrease again. They would try to hold the price. As, uh, as high as possible, as long as possible, and uh, we need to take care that that we find a solution for both parties always. Because when we don't like to, to, to buy it or we don't like to pay it, we can't get it because they can sell it any, uh, elsewhere. This is our challenge. Yeah. Now to the process. Uh, here you see the raw material um, as it comes. For example, these are sorted um, old clothes, here you see jeans, you see on the left picture, on the left side, the safety jackets, for example. Um, yeah, this is how it looks like. Um, mostly we also get uh, big bags, we also get cartons, we also get boxes. We get it loose that we press it by ourselves. Uh, many, many ways, but this is this is an explanation because now I explain you the, the process of the, of the jeans recycling. 
Um, there we have the pre-cutting. Um, I mean, it's difficult to see here, but you see just that it's cut. And on the left side, um, I mean, it runs there very fast. Um, you see the cutting line. I mean, uh, you see, I don't know if you see my mouse, I hope so, but uh, on here you see a part of the knife and the knife is cutting, yeah, very, very fast. And uh, to, to, to get the material a little, little, little shorter. We do it also uh, always minimum two times in two different ways so that we have not a not long pieces because when we just cut it in one time or two times in the, in, in the same direction, then we might have uh, three centimeter long fibers, but the width of it could be 30 centimeters or whatever. So we cut it in two directions. This is how we pre adjust the length of the fiber. So this is the first step to adjust the length. Good, there we have the rejection. Um, after the cutting, we have a rejection process, which is uh, developed by us, uh, by, by ourselves. This is why I can't uh, show you a picture. You just have to think that it is, uh, it runs a little bit like a, like a dryer of, of like, um, or a wash machine, that there's, it's screwing very fast and the hard pieces fell, fell out. This is how you have to keep it in mind, how it, how it runs. But uh, yeah, and then you see that we sort out everything. So we so we uh, put in the the whole jeans as it is, and uh, this way we sort out the main part of uh, buttons, zippers, uh, the leather label on the back of the jeans, um, and these these things. Um, this step we have three times in the pulling line, two times before it can, uh, gets into the blending box, and uh, one after the pulling that we can be sure that most of it is sorted out. Yeah, here you have um, in the front, you see the start. Um, here we put the material on and then here are the cutting lines. Um, and normally we have uh, we have uh, behind it, we have the uh, the sorting lines where we sort out the metal, what you can't see, and then it goes into the this big blending box. This blending box could, could take approximately seven to eight tons in one step. Um, yeah. And then the material goes from from there to there. Here is a big big machine who pulls out the the material from the blending box, and then it goes on our pulling line uh, or tearing line. Everybody needs to uh, uses another word for it. Yeah, and here um, you have to see um, that um, the material goes from from the left to the right, um, and it gets pulled by big rollers with needles. Um, I will show you them here because then you see it the best. These are the tumblers. This is our tool how with uh, with which we we pull the fibers. The the weight of one of it is approximately one ton. Uh, the needles, um, I've counted them, of course. I made I made the effort. Um, in this case, these are 99,000, but we have also 95,000 and something like uh, 69,000. So we have three different uh, sizes. Um, so uh, yeah, they are screwing very fast, uh, easily explained. And then there are some some smaller rollers which are screwing also in a in, a, in, a, in another direction. And this is the the pulling process easily explained. So this is how um, how you you have to keep it in mind. Um, per yeah, on, on, on the different pulling lines, we have the step um, different uh, different numbers. We have we have a pulling line where we can do it just just with three tumblers. On the jeans line, we have an addition. Uh, we, we have um, six uh, tumblers, and the more tumblers you use, the finer you can pull it because jeans is a very strong fabric. Uh, you have to pull it very very harsh to, 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 get a, to get a fiber out of it, to not have too many pieces inside. What is a, a problem in the end for producing a yarn of it, out of it, for example, and so on. And so we have to pull it very strong. Yeah, and afterwards we have the packaging. There you see on the left side uh, how the bale is pressed. It's a, in this case, it's a full automatic press. And on the right side, you see the bales, how they look like uh, when they are stored in our facility. Yeah, and then we have the blending line. What I, what I said before, um, there you see the different components on the left side, how we put it, put them on the on the line, and on the back side you see four big boxes where we can uh, where we couldn't where we can put put in or where, where we put in the the fibers to blend. On and on the right side you see how the box look like looks like when we when we open it. There, a colleague is checking the quality, um, 
and uh, yeah and then we have many different possibilities we can put the material now on the right side is a, is a good expl um, a good example because uh, on this you see the different shades per per layer the different layers and and on this case we would put it put this material now again from one box to another to have a second blend to get it homogeneous because this is of course not homogeneous in this case yeah so use denim for con uh, for consumer it is waste and for us it's a raw material so this is what i what i said before uh, the, the 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 total um yeah production which i've explained to you now uh, has a loss of ex ex uh, approximately eight percent um including zippers buttons and dust um, normally from for other materials the the approximately loss is approximately three uh, percent with dust and so on but uh, due to the zippers, of course, are very, very heavy. Um, um, the loss is, of course, higher. Yeah. Um, to give you a number, in 2019, we have you, uh, pro processed approximately 2,000 ton used jeans. So that you have a number, how many, how many tons we process in the, in our, in our line. Only jeans, only used jeans. We also additional. We have the the other cotton materials like. Uh, um, fabrics from jeans production and others, or fiber, um, threads from jeans production and so on, but only the used jeans um, is this. And then we have also used clothes, what is almost uh, a, simi a similar number, also clothes like pullovers and the, the knitted wear, what is used for, for, for painting, non-woven for example, um, it's almost the same, the same number, a little lower. Yeah, most of this flows into the automotive market currently. But uh, with, uh, with ESG together, we have uh, in the past uh, found a solution, or ESG has found a solution to produce a yarn out of it, um, all, out of our material, and um, produce jeans and so on. I mean, on the Ali Connect, you see the uh, Hack Your Jeans project, with, what is really, really interesting. So when you are interested in such things, uh, have a look on it, because um, it's a really, really good um, project, and I think it should be more serious than it is for many companies. I think it's it's very, very good and interesting because, yeah, now no, nobody knows uh, what is inside a car. I mean, uh, in, in, in almost every car on the, on the, yeah, on the, on the bottom is, uh, is a non-woven, an airlay non-woven produced to, uh, out of more than 50% old jeans. This is what nobody knows, what, what, what they're driving around. Um, so, um, so uh, it is mm, for many people. They say, "Okay, I, I, I put my old clothes in the container, and ev anybody or anybody sells sells it and gets money out of it." And and so many people are not so interested in um, in sorting it out. They many people just waste it or dispose it, uh, like more to dispose it than than giving it to the to the Red Cross or whatever. This is it's a pity, and uh, so many people don't don't know what it, what what this means because. Um, when you have the, uh, the genes, no, why, why recycling? I mean, I will directly go to the next point here. The manufacturing of new textiles will reduce 4,000 liter of water per one kilo cotton, what you need. This is the number, I mean, there are, when you when you go to the, uh, check some, some websites on the internet, you see many, many numbers. I mean, the 4,000 liter are the lowest I have found. Um, some, some people say you need 8,000 liter water per kilogram uh, cotton, so I think it's a very huge number uh, when you think about it. Um, it's not, yeah. So I think it's a good reason why we have to use recycling, so uh, recycled fibers. I mean, uh, yeah. When I go back to the top, uh, of course, the raw material is here. I mean, uh, what you what what you can use, you don't need to dispose. What you disp uh, what you don't need to dispose and can use, you don't have to produce new, and then you have the the water direction um yeah though in the pulling process uh, we have just low energy the only thing is what we need is uh, yeah electricity uh, 50 percent of our electricity we we, uh, we use um yeah the the renew electricity like solar and so on so um for this for this reason the the, the effort in the, in the energy needs are not so big yeah then we have of course the closed loop this is why also what what is also talking for the recycling i mean Every textile uh, textile company has waste, and 
it's al almost not a not a small amount. I mean, uh, we are talking about 20% or a little lower or a little higher, depends on the on the process. Um, what he can use, what he can normally reuse if he wants. So uh, when he's when we get the salvages from non-woven production, for example, the, the cutoffs from the sides, and we pull it to a fiber, and they can blend it 20% again, for example, in their 100% uh, in, in, in their in their in their material with 80%, for example, virgin material, they can reach an almost yeah or, or a comparable material uh, quality like when they use 100% virgin. And so they have 20% less virgin. I mean, the recycling also has has a, has its price, but the price is yeah depends on the raw material. Sometimes just 30% of the virgin price, sometimes a little higher, but let me say 50, 60 maximum. And when they still have the same processability, I mean, uh, then the other question would be why why not recycling? <laughs> then I mean, this is uh, of course, yeah. Yeah, our social responsibilities, of course. I mean, this is uh, we do apprentice. We have trainings here. Uh, currently, we have 140 employees together with Altex Gonorphils 220, and collaboration with social service pa uh, providers like uh, we have. A, together with ESG, we are also working together with a with a brand who produces or, or sells his uh, his jeans, recycled jeans, and together with them, we have a we have a, a project that they collect from their customers, from their stores, and they have stores in Benelux and Germany, um, that, the, that the customer can bring the jeans to their stores and their old jeans, and uh, they send it to a, to a social service provider here, the Wittgenshof, it's a partner from us. They put them because they are 15 kilo uh, cartons and uh, packages, and the thing is that if we, I mean, our, our line can 1000 kilo per hour uh, can run 1000 kilo per hour and when you have 15 kilo boxes i mean you are very you need to be very very tough and very very good uh, to to run this amount so this is why we say okay let's send the, the the packages to this social service provider it's an easy work for them um they have fun because they of course will hold the own the 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 one or another another jeans for themselves for us it's okay um, it's a benefit for both sides, so and uh, and we get it then packed in boxes, for example. Then we can put the 500 kilo boxes directly in the in the line, yeah, and sponsoring of clubs. Yeah, um, we are also certified in 9001 and 50001. Um, 50001 is an energy um, QM, um, yeah, certificate. So it means that we switch off the light when we go out and 9001 is of course uh, known. What we don't have is an environment uh, certificate. This is because of the very, very big yeah, requirements. Um, we are a textile recycling company, so we say we do our thing for the for the environment, but uh, by now it's not planned to get it to because the effort is, is quite high, but uh, I think that we do our thing for our green footstep. Yeah. Also, my my part uh, to this to this to this talk. Um, I mean, later or now, I don't know. Uh, we have some time for question and answer. So if you have any any questions, please feel free. Also, if you would like to contact me later, uh, it's also possible. And I hope it was interesting. I need to. I always have to be careful that I don't take that it don't take too long. So uh, I hope it was interesting. And yeah, thank you for your attention. <coughs> Thank you. Um, maybe no. just uh, to uh, complement uh, this uh, this presentation of uh, of Gerwin as well, um, I would like to uh, share um, a view on um, the Eliconnect um, showroom. Maybe Gerwin, yes, if you could sharing then i'll uh briefly uh, show you if it's open the hack your jeans page uh, on the on ellie connects uh, so uh, my computer is a little bit slow today <laughs> okay uh 
So here, for those who have not uh, registered uh, yet, uh, you can uh, register on LE Connect, and this is uh, what you will uh, be seeing. So it shows uh, the the actors' products in the textile value chains uh, and uh, some different projects, uh, challenges we're working on, uh, and some uh, general intelligence on uh, different topics um, that we are uh, following uh, with the intelligence. So if you would like to know more about chemical recycling, textile recycling, sustainable packaging, etc., you can uh, you can look um, to uh, to join uh, the Eliconnect uh, uh, platform. Uh, I just wanted to uh, show to you as well um, in link to uh, the very interesting story of uh, of Gerwin as well. Uh, the page of uh, of the Hack Your Jeans project. Now I'm talking uh, European Spinning Group um, based. So indeed, um, as you saw, a uh, very, um, I think, industrial explain explanation about process, but I think it's very relevant to to give the the, the platform and the podium as well to uh, to the industry itself. So you understand also the, the complexity uh, of this value chain uh, linked to mechanical recycling as well. So uh, as Gerwin uh, introduced, uh, European Spinning Group uh, is buying uh, the post-consumer denim uh, waste either uh, from, um, you know, a collection campaign that we did with partners ourselves or uh, we buy it from uh, from Altex directly. Uh, you see the value chain here that we already explained in a, in a little uh, visual here as well. And um, I think um, in this uh, visual, you see all the projects that are currently already uh, running at European Spinning Group within the Hack Your Jeans project. So we have been developing, uh, we and our customers, partners um, in, uh, in the fashion uh, business, uh, the sweaters, the denim, uh, as well, uh, you know, uh, sneakers, uh, socks, uh, you, you see very different applications and home textiles, bedding, furniture. Uh, so we are really with Hack Your Jeans trying out a very broad range of, uh, of textile products to really show what is possible with mechanical recycling uh, materials. Um, and some projects are already running on a, on a large scale. And just to give a figure to you as well, I think uh, in, the, in the past two years, we have uh, used about uh, 75 tons of, uh, of uh, recycled denim fiber uh, of those 2000 <laughs> that the Altex is, uh, is pulling. But that's already a growing figure in the industry and it's, it continues growing. So uh, I think it's a, it's a nice example of what is possible. But of course, you know, call to the industry is um, and to uh, the consumer as well uh, to to increase this uh, this business over uh, over the coming months and uh, and years uh, to, you know, enhance uh, the impact as well. So if you would like some more information, just have a look. Uh, so this um, uh, content will also be presented uh, on the on the platform itself. Uh, but um, now, uh, instead of uh, you know sharing uh, more details, uh, I would like to give you a floor because uh, it's almost uh, 3 p.m. Uh, to give the floor to you for uh, some questions uh, to uh, myself or uh, Gerwin uh, for any uh, additional. Uh, thoughts, questions, remarks, uh, whatever uh, you would like uh, to share with us. We thank you for your attention in any way. I hope um, it was, uh, you know, you have learned a little bit more uh, about uh, this recycling process uh, and maybe you can do something uh, in your business with it as, a, as well. So uh, we would love to hear from you. So